I'm Steve Thurston, editor of the Arlington Mercury. And I'm Jason Spencer, editor of Arlington Patch. Please join us in conversation. I've been in and out of the newspaper industry for half my life, but... Uh, Wait, how old are you? I'm 34. Wow. <clears throat> so, yeah, I started writing a weekly column for the local daily when I was in high school. Where, where was that? Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. What about you? I, I've been in and out of journalism a lot more than you have, I think. Not in terms of years of service, but just the in and out nature. I had a print newspaper in Arlington called the Buckingham Herald Trib, which was, it, it only came out once uh, a quarter but it was as newsworthy as I could get it. Part of the problem was that it's, it was print, so it was really hard to put together and it was very time consuming, um, I think. And then from there, it was, it's been a lot of electronic stuff, you know, Buckingham Herald Trib and now the Arlington Mercury and that kind of thing. So, so we're both on the same kind of trajectory. Yeah, where yeah. It's, where it's digital only. Yeah, that's where it's all going. I mean, it's... That makes me nervous. It does. As, as, and I'm working for a digital only company, but it's still, you know... Yeah. Why does it make you nervous? I don't know. Because um, everything's so fast. Mm. You know? Yeah. I mean, watching the newsroom, you know, in the last papers that I was at in, in South Carolina especially, watching the newsroom shrink. Yeah. You know, going from, I don't know, 18 reporters. We had a religion reporter. We had a health reporter. We had, you know, uh, all these different types of reporters. And by the end of my time there, we were down to like six. Yeah. You know, one person yeah. does features, you know, all the features. Yeah, that's, I get nervous by that stuff. I get nervous too, just, you were saying the speed of it and everything and how it's like, money, time is money, you know, especially in a situation like this where you're paying a reporter to sit around and do some sort of reporting. And that means they have to put out something today because there's nothing new on the website today. Um, they have to put out something new tomorrow and the next day and all that kind of thing. And so if you want to hire somebody to do some of those longer pieces, some of those more featurey kind of pieces, well, you have to figure out how you're going to pay for them. And th I mean, this has always been the case, case with, you know, investigative journalism or right. the longer like news magazine right. kind of pieces. Right, a day kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, and, and then you're, you're pulling it and it's like, you know, if you're doing a really serious long piece, it's going to be a lot more than 15 minutes a day that you need to spend on it, you know, or you're going to have to get so much stuff uh, in the can that you get that week where you can say, okay, we're going to finish this story and get it done and get it out. Right. And I think uh, even at the print outlets uh, or digital startups or whatever, finding that window mm -hmm. is getting harder for everybody. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I've, I've heard that I've got friends in the industry, you know, and I, that's, I constantly hear that. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely, that window's getting smaller, and because it's fragmented, you know, we, we've now, the, you, you and I went to a budget meeting, you know, here we are, semi-competitors, or friendly competitors, or right. whatever you want to call us. Um, you're working at the Patch in town, or sorry, at Patch in town, and I'm working the Arlington Mercury, um, and we're at the same budget hearing. And I mean, if you read the journalistic literature and that kind of thing, it's good to have a couple of reporters from a couple of different news outlets right at an event to make sure one isn't lying or ignoring something, you well, know, to it, double check us. Too, and, the more people you throw at, yeah. uh, you throw at something, somebody's going to come back with a better story. Right. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> uh, go ahead. I want to yeah. come back to that. Okay, yeah, no, because my whole point, though, is that right now we've got you at, you at Patch, Rachel at Patch, me at the Mercury. I've got a few people who are working for me, like Jonathan Kim, who's a little bit more regular and then I've got some interns who are working for me. Scott McCaffrey at the Sun Gazette, Scott Broadbeck at Arl Now, and then Mike Pope or somebody else at the Arlington Connection. There's like seven of us. Oh, and um, Pat Sullivan, Patricia Sullivan at the Washington right. Post. So there's like six or seven of us. And, and from what, when I've done the research on this kind of thing, and I, and I make it sound like I've gone off and done research, you know, the little bit of reading and the talking to other editors I've done about this, is that a, a, a county the size of 220,000 people, like we are, with a billion dollar budget, we should easily have six or seven reporters out there 
covering it. If we were a regular weekly paper, if, if there were just one weekly paper in Arlington, to really cover it well, six or seven, the, full, the six or seven reporters, maybe three or four full-time equivalents, and then the others uh, part-timers who are doing one yeah. thing or another. And I think this market totally would, could oh, support yeah. that. I mean, and this, I that could, could have too. a paper that was Arlington and Virginia specific uh -huh. that could compete with the Times Stitch Patch with the Virginia mm -hmm. uh, uh, Norfolk and uh, uh, no I Virginia Pilot yeah and the Roanoke Times Dispatch. You know, yeah. a Virginia paper. Yeah, because you could easily do that kind of thing, yeah. and, and I think Arlington would totally support it. And so now we've got all of those journalists here. I mean, we've got actual journalists doing that but so often we're chasing down the exact same story so it's it's less efficient i mean there's an efficiency to like you're saying having three of us come back and seeing who can do the best story on the subject you know right. and that kind of thing but it would also be nice sometimes to think okay we've got three people there and the other three people are off covering something else that's going on you know at, at that time on that day well and, and to that point into throwing as many people as you can get on 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 one thing. Yeah. <laughs> I went to this uh, Knight Center. It was digital media training yeah. back when I was. Well, I was at the Herald Journal actually, but it was up here. It's at College Park. Right. Um, and Gene Roberts spoke. Mm -hmm. And you know, Gene, yeah, yeah, yeah. know of Gene Roberts, like yeah. a legendary publisher. Yeah. So it was at a, a paper in, in uh, Pennsylvania when John F. Kennedy got assassinated. Mm. They didn't have a budget to send anybody, so he like rolled pennies. And took like cabs and the train and did whatever he could to get down there. Wow! And you know every reporter in the country descended on on Dallas. Right. You know, every, or every paper, every publication that could afford something. Yeah. Had somebody there, and he's the one who came back with the photo of Lee Harvey Oswald holding the, the gun. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's. I mean, I know that's on a, like a macro scale. Right. Right. But it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, and it is. And, and there's a lot going on in Arlington. Well, and there's a lot in a in a situation like that, there's definitely a lot going on too where there, you know, where there's enough for those six in for us there is enough for six reporters to go in each of us county fair is, is it's nowhere near the JFK shooting. Right, right, right no. But, but it's important. It's an, yeah, important, it's an important local thing. event. And you can have six reporters at that important local event covering six different stories easily without yeah. without us really bumping into one another. Oh yeah. And so that's a time when yeah, it doesn't bother me at all that we've got six different news outlets, but there are times when I'm just we were talking about this one day the other day, with times when it's like we're all going to the county board meeting and well, okay. Not all of us go all of the time. That's my little thing. But um, the the county board meeting, you know, we walk away. You, or watch online. Get, yeah. We all get the, the same sort of feed, you know. I mean, I'm sitting there in the room, and I'm getting it, and, and somebody else is sitting at home watching it online or watching it on TV, or they've come, and we're all getting, you know, the county board member doesn't say one thing in the room, and another thing gets broadcast out someplace. So right. we're all getting that same feed. And so there there is... There is room, I think, there to sort of, st you know, there's room to step back and say, well, why do we need all six of us to write exactly the same story that the county board delayed something or, you know. I'm, I don't do this anymore because I'm getting older, but used to on a story, just a big local story. I mean, I would wait up until 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and see every see all the different outlets that were covering right. the same thing that right. I was. Waiting, uh, their stories would publish for the next day, right? And I would read every one and compare them. Yeah, you know, see who got something I didn't have. Right. See what I had that they didn't have. Yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, there's there's a way to learn and feed off each other in yeah. that. It's just it's just there's so much going on. The pressure makes right. it hard. Well, and that's the other thing is that whole time pressure, and that's I think everywhere. It's always been everywhere in journalism, but I think even more so now. It's that what really needs to get tweeted right this second, you well, know, and what can we hold off on? You know? Two things to that. There, there's a saying that developed in the industry not long ago, that, uh, or a few years ago now, actually, that, that uh, news doesn't break, it tweets. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's, there's, there's actually this discussion going on around whether press releases, news releases, need to be more than 140 characters. Right. I always was taught growing up, you want to be first and you want to be right. Yeah. But you want to be right first, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, uh, and just hearing people talk, at least, and this probably isn't true for like city editors or their equivalent managing editors, maybe up the food chain. Mm -hmm. But on the boots on the ground people like us, it's just like, 
okay, so what if they get it in two minutes right. or five minutes? Right. You know, it's it's not worth turning in something substandard right. just to get the jump. Well, and if you talk to people in Arlington, too, it's so often... You know, they're like, yeah, I read it today. And you're thinking, I posted that on Tuesday and today's Thursday? Wait, you know? <laughs> Journalist held the, the term editor has kind of become uh, molded into or, or meshed into the, the term journalist because mm -hmm. nobody is just a reporter anymore. Right, right. Which is bad for the industry, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because the more, the when one person can focus on one area mm -hmm. that's where the best stuff comes from right that's where stories come out that change people's lives yeah and change the community yeah and set the agenda mm -hmm. and uh it's but 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 it's nobody can do that anymore right i right. mean even at the herald journal we were i remember going out i'd have my notebook my voice recorder mm -hmm. tucked between my hand and my notebook right taking notes trying to take video <laughs> with this hand <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, you yeah. know, and you gotta keep your arm close to your body so the camera doesn't shake right. uh, or get a tripod. <laughs> yeah. I, I find myself too often getting back to my, my, my office, you know, in my basement, um, looking, looking at it and saying, well, I've got a half-assed audio story or a quarter of a video or you know in in what it ends up being is okay listen to the audio watch the video and write an actual news story and maybe take video maybe take a still from the video if i didn't have take right photos with the regular camera you know so you See, get you get all of that you get it you get home if you haven't really planned it well enough you get home and it. you're like damn it i don't have a good story on in any way for this you I, know and and it's frustrating. I pr I pretty much, I try to plan it out. I mean, because yeah. I've I've been there, some, you know, enough yeah, to, yeah. to. Once upon a time, you know, people would get up and they would either read the paper before they went to work mm -hmm. or at home when they, you know, yeah. when they get home from work. Yeah. The the prime reading times were like early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Yeah. And those have both moved inward because right. now people get ready, get up, get ready, go to work, and mm -hmm. then they check their. Right. All their email and their yeah. feeds and the news sites. And they yep. check it again about 3 or 4 o'clock yeah, before they're like ready to go home. 11.30 and 3.30, that's what it seems to be to me. Uh, I don't know if this is an Arlington thing. Yeah. But, you know, in newspapers, a lot of papers save their big stories for Sunday. Right. But... I, I wouldn't even post on Sunday. Oh, we, we, we do, yet. like, the bare minimum on yeah. Saturday and Sunday because yeah. it's just nobody reads it. And then yeah, Monday and morning... thinks I'm going to wake up and sit at my computer on Sunday morning and read <laughs> news, you know? I mean, right. It just doesn't happen. All right. I, and, and then Monday morning, though, the stuff that's, like, three days uh -huh. old, everybody's yeah. reading, yeah. finding out about. Yeah. So that's... Yeah weird yeah i don't know where wh where it's going or how much we care where it's going you know i mean it's like so long they're eventually reading do we really care you know that they're reading at 11 o'clock on their at their desk well i mean in the context of if it's four o'clock and i just got back from a event or something and this is kind of a big story yeah. do i kill myself to, to get to it out in an it. hour an hour and a half right, right. knowing that nobody's going to read See, it for three also, days yeah. yeah for a lot of it it really is that way i think where we could just say you know it's all right you know it's okay, but then you see it tweeted on somebody else that somebody else did stop and do it, and then and it immediately we become the competitive people we are, and it's like ah oh, crud, should I have? And now I've got to read it, and I and I'll admit when it tweets on, and I and I know I've either sat on the story or I couldn't go for one reason or another, right. and I look at it and I'm just like, people are going here instead of to my site. And, oh, the story's good. Damn it. You know, why couldn't it have at least sucked that way? You know? yeah. it's, it's hard to not feel guilty. Yeah. And not, to not, like, beat yourself up. Yeah, but and, and that goes back to my thing on the whole, like, you know, we've got six of us chasing down that same exact same story. In some ways, I think we could do a better job if we weren't broken up into six different companies. Well... There's there's merits to that, or if yeah. any one company could grow right. to support, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly, and have a few other companies, you know, have, but, you know. You know, sometimes I feel like we compete against Arlington County. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've seen their, their TV uh -huh. production, yeah. and, uh, you know, they're, it's, it's just like, they'll put out a story on, or a video, mm -hmm. That it makes you know it yep. makes me feel like why did I spend you know a few yes. hours putting up to a few hundred words? Yeah, they've got this whole production. Yeah, and and I'm like, 
and and you and I are much more. We're we're not bloggers. We're not. No. We're we're not write write something that has eight links to different things and then include the video from. We tend to be well. We're going to go out and shoot our shoot our own video and post our own video right. to our own website and right. that kind of thing. And so yeah, it gets doubly annoying when the county puts it out and you're just like, really. You know, I spent three hours there, you know, interviewing people and talking, and then another hour and a half to put the video together and post it, and and I, county I, comes out. You know, <laughs> it's like, come on. I get frustrated with the county sometimes. They've, you know, I've gone around with them a few times about this. They'll put out a news release at like 11 or 12, or even sometimes like 1 in the morning mm -hmm. if it's a county board yeah. going on, something going on. And then you call the person, like, as soon as it comes out, yeah. call who's listed as the contact. Right. And they're asleep, or, they, you know, they, they're like, I don't know. You know, yeah. it seems like the county is more concerned about message management yeah, than being ways. responsive to actual inquiries. Right. You know, right. which is our job. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's, it's interesting, too, because you'll go to the county board meeting, and... The county board will make a decision on something on X, Y, or Z, and the PR will come out. You know, I mean, they know which way it's going to vote, especially on a lot of these things. They really know which way the vote is going to go, and so the PR department has the press release out on it. You know, a half hour after the vote. I mean, you're sitting there. I'm, I'm sitting there typing on my iPad, typing notes, and then you know, look at my email, and there's the PR, the the press release that's come out from that vote they're now on item 37 and it's the vote from item 35 but it's interesting a lot of times they don't put out the press release on item 36 you know and so it is interesting because i do feel like it's like oh yeah we have to be there i mean if right. all you did was relied on the press release if all we did was blogged you know and aggregate a few things rewrite it you know right. turn it into a uh, you know a little blog post and that kind of thing you'd actually miss a, a significant number of items in the in the the county board meeting yeah. yeah, well, I mean, they put out releases on the messages they want right, right. disseminated. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, is why I feel like we compete with them sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I wonder how much that is everywhere, though. You know, that it's the it's the, the politician's job to put out the story of the politician. It happens. Oh, yeah, it happens everywhere, but Arlington has a lot of resources. Yeah. So that Devoted makes it harder. It. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. And you know what's interesting? And this never came out. Um. And I'm annoyed with myself because I was there and I should have put it out. But when the county did that survey, oh, one thing that nobody reported on, and I'm glad we now have the opportunity to talk about this, is that for and because it, it's it's us. They said, where where do you get most of your news about the county? Go ahead and take a guess. Arlington County, Arlington County's Facebook page. Close. Arlington the, County's Twitter account. Yeah, no, the Arlington Voice, the newsletter. Oh yeah, that's where they get ninety, and it was it was hands down. That's where I get most of my news about the county. It wasn't us. It wasn't all now. It wasn't the Sun Gazette. It wasn't the Connection. It wasn't the Post. It was the county's newsletter, which is significant when you think about it. You know, that's that's where I get so frustrated with journalism in Arlington. That's why I started the Arlington Mercury. I before that I had the Herald Trib, because I do look at it and think there's stuff that's missing. You know, oh, totally. It, there, it's just right. Arlington is too big for one-man shows. It's just too damn big for one-man show. My hometown, I worked for the local, uh, one summer I worked for the local paper, paper it's called The Chronicle. During the summer when it's at their highest, it distributes somewhere around 40,000, 30, okay. 38,000. Yeah, but what's their digital footprint? Re, uh, none. They don't, their website is, please go find our, our, our <laughs> papers everywhere. Okay. Seriously. During the worst of the, the, the meltdown in 2008, they right. still published 48 pages. The Sun Gazette here, because of the, it had hit the um, uh, housing market so hard, the Sun Gazette went down to 28 pages or 20 pages, something right. like that. Well, the it post shrank. Everything, yeah, everything, everything shrank. shrank. Yeah. This paper kept putting out the same thing because they rely on hundreds of basically classified ad size ads, even with like icons and the name of the company and a phone number and that's it. But anyway, my whole point was 110,000 people Somewhere, let's say just for fun, 35,000 distribution. The rule of thumb on distribution is, what, one in three quarters people read a newspaper. It's something like that right. and for community papers. So not quite double. So somewhere around 60,000 people, 110,000 people figure, okay, the ad only adults are reading it. Most kids under, say, 
15 aren't even picking it up. Most people who start reading it are probably in their mid-20s. All of a sudden, you're down from 110 possible people, 110,000 possible people down to like 70, and you start thinking, they've got a penetration of 60,000 people in an area where they'd expect 70,000 people. You know, I mean, it's like a crazy 80% penetration or some crazy thing like that. My whole point with this, though, is that they have six full-time employees. You know, and they have competition from from other weeklies in like my hometown is in this pie, and there are other weeklies that like a Venn diagram. You know, other weeklies carve out pieces and that kind of thing, and a daily paper, that TV station that I mentioned, and a business journal, and like three radio stations. Two of them have news crews, and we have the for years we had the Sun Gazette with Scott McCaffrey running the show. Two hundred thousand people. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the market is fertile. Yeah. And it uh, still is. And it still is. And, and yet we seem to be building one-man shows everywhere. Well, you know, you know it's, there's it's... there's two of us here in Pet with Patch. Right. Rachel is my colleague. You know, right. I'm not her superior in any right, way. Right. But, um, and we do have some support, like, with an ad rep mm-hmm. uh, and, and some, some regional people to help with editing. But uh, two points to, to what you were just saying. The uh, paper I interned in college, the daily the Daily Record in Dunn, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Hoover Adams was the publisher. Uh-huh. He he died recently, which is, is thought I thought of this mm-hmm. because they always ran his uh, column. He wrote a column like two or three times a week. It was called uh, on the front page. Th- these right? little things double, or something. Double yeah. wide on the front. No, page? just one column, oh, okay. single <laughs> column down one side. Right. And it was just about him and his friends. You'd see it yeah, in the chamber yeah. or this function or that. And you got the most letters whenever they skipped that column. It, their penetration was 112%. <laughs> they were in the Wall Street Journal. There were, people, there were people who were taking home more than one copy. Yeah, yeah some people yeah. bought two copies. Yeah. And he said it all was because community journalism, local journalism, comes down to names and faces. Yep. He's like, I don't care if it's a boring photo of a boardroom. Mm-hmm. We're going to run it, and we're going to name every person in there. Yep. Because every person in there has a husband or a wife or a kid or an aunt or yeah, uncle or somebody. Yeah. Yep. And you know, pick up that paper. Yeah. You know, and it's, so, I mean, it's the same kind of, and that's what we do yeah. now. Yeah. It's just there's a lot of names and a lot of faces. Well, and on top of that, the, the problem that we face, I think, too, is the the idea that, Digital journalism is ephemeral. It's it's gone. You know. In what do you mean? Well, well, the we post it. It's it's around forever, but you don't keep it up forever. That is, you get the local paper, and your kid is on that in there. You clip that photo. You put it on the fridge, and right? Cu- yeah, yeah. We used to call that refrigerator journalism. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it's what exactly. you would cut out. Exactly. But and now you just print it out. Yeah, but nobody does. Who? And when's the last time you've printed out a story with like somebody you knew? Because their face was on the photo. And because of the way we run websites, my website, the biggest the photo can be is 250K. So it's a small little file okay. that if it prints out, if you printed it out kind of small, like right, maybe, right, right. you know, three by five, like on a three by five card yeah. size, yeah, it might print pretty well. But it's not going to be this stellar photo that you're going to be like, wow, look at, you know. Like, yeah. And you're certainly not going to be able to blow it up to an eight by ten to put it but, on the fridge. But, I mean, that could be worked out. I mean, yeah. if, if we start to see a demand, we can always try yeah, to maybe and I don't know. I think that is a, a change in the readership. I think that's – it. You know, because people, people will ask me, were you there? And then ask me for the photo. Or they'll say, were you there? <laughs> Was somebody from one of the newspaper newspapers there? Because if you've got a copy of it, I'd like the photo. You know, it's like, you're asking me for, for the newspaper's photo of, you know, that what they printed. I clipped out. My daughter was in the paper yeah. uh, not too long ago, and I clipped it out of the Sun Gazette. You know, I mean, of course I did. You know, it's the, yeah. it's the paper. It is changed. I mean, that to me, that's a significant change. And I wonder if Hoover Adams could would it would it, keep would, up with it? Could it keep up with it? Yeah. What would be his answer to that? I don't because I'm not sure that it is just names and faces like it used to be. You know? I'm, yeah. I'm, no, that's a that's a really good point. Yeah. Although, uh, I always do try to encourage oh, like if we get a free like a oh, county yeah. fair story. That's the first. Thing. Yes. You that's want the all first that's thing. all you want? Yeah. Names yeah, and faces. Names People and faces. want to see their yep, their, their kid cheering the yep. piglets around or. Yep. 
going down the slide exactly. or exactly whatever yeah and then you know and, then, uh, and handing out a business card every time you do that it's yeah because like, yeah, yeah. you don't have a paper to give them it's not like you can say right oh yeah you know or go you know or a tote bag we have patch yeah, totes you do have <laughs> nice patch yeah you know you guys ruled the county fair with the patch totes because tote bags what do you do when you get to the county fair you go around and you collect a bunch of garbage you're never going to touch again but what do you need to hold all of that garbage uh, a tote bag. <laughs> that's right. And that's why Patch won the day. Yeah, I know. And they're environmentally were... friendly too. They, are they? Are yes. they hemp? I, no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. I can't really speak to that. <laughs> but uh, I think you should talk to them. We want hemp tote bags. Uh, I'll put that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them Steve Thurston says make hemp yeah. tote bags. Well, you know, you, you were talking earlier about the differentiation between us and bloggers, and yeah. that's important because mm -hmm. a lot of people. I mean. The industry's changing. Yeah. People are changing. Readership habits are changing. And, and, and the speed at which corporations and different businesses and different governmental entities all put out news is is mm -hmm. different, is yeah, all changing. Speed. We're trying to keep up with that. But then it's, it's like it's circular because then the readers are trying to keep up with us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of readers, I, 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 I fear... They hear like a news website, mm -hmm. like either either Arlington Patch, or Arlington Mercury, yeah, and their their first thought is, oh, that's a blog. Yeah, how's the blog going? It, My friends always ask me that. How's the blog? going? That drives me nuts. And yeah, I mean, and they don't mean it like we know this isn't real journalism. They just mean it like that's the that is the term, the art or whatever you want. Right. You know, that's the that's what we that's how it's referred to now. It's it's blogging. It's not. It's not journalism in that sort of in in people's minds it's not journalism in that classic sort of you know oh journalism I'm is my the fingers paper. exactly ink on my exactly. fingers reading the exactly. paper yeah exactly right. you know but if they so printed it out they might yeah if they only would <laughs> but we need better photos um <laughs> Well, but but uh, I just do want to plug that Arlington Patch does host bloggers uh -huh. because yeah, we well, want people to contribute. Exactly. And people have always contributed. Um, User-generated content. User-generated content, but, but you know. <laughs> I'll give you that plug, too. Back, back in the day, we called it Letters to the Editor. Yeah. You yeah. know, a lot of places still do. Yeah. And yeah. we run Letters to the Editor, but yeah. it's just a lot easier to do. People comment on stories. Uh -huh. People post blogs. Yeah. And that is one way to alleviate some of the the one man band pressure. Yeah, and and it's we've just, got that too. I mean, yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. we've got the the blogs. So we've only got a couple of them. We don't have anywhere near what you have at Patch, but we've got a few of them. But having that feedback uh it it, it is invaluable. Mm -hmm. Um and and I remember I was telling you about Spartanburg watching the newsroom go from like 18 to 6 over yeah. over what was it like 6 years or something. Mm. And and you know the post laid off people in droves and I mean every everybody has yeah. McClatchy has cut people everywhere yeah. the yeah. Charlotte Observer the State and Columbia so everybody's getting smaller and usually you know early retirement's always a part of that mm -hmm. it's the people who have been working the beats for like twenty years yep. and who know everybody in town mm -hmm. and who know everything that's going to happen they're the ones who are kind of being siphoned off yeah yeah and that makes Not it. Harder Siphoned for us off makes them sound like though they're going someplace else. Where a lot of times it's well, some of them are retiring. Yeah, some of them are retiring, or they're getting out of the, you know they're getting siphoned off to something completely unrelated. They're journalism. going into PR. Yeah, they're making twice into, as much and yeah, working half, for half the hours. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wearing much nicer shoes all of a sudden. <laughs> that institutional knowledge. Oh yeah, it's. it's I mean, it's, I learned more from yeah. the people I worked with who had been working, mm -hmm. you know, years and years above me, either. Yeah. Now we're the old guys, and yeah. we're not that old. I know, <laughs> and that's the thing. And it's it's interesting. I've, I've said this before. It's a great time to be a young journalist. You know, it's a great time to be 25 and be a journalist because the jobs are out there for that age. Maybe not tons and tons of jobs, but who are you going to hire if you're you know you're a, a web startup? Who are you going to hire? The guy who costs you a hundred thousand dollars a year, or the guy who costs you thirty. You know, I right. mean, it's like it's it's a no freaking brainer. You know?